Coming up next, I'll tell you three things you need to be thinking about for a job search in March. I'll give you 12 interview tips to impress. We'll take your calls and your chats, and it all starts right now. I'm coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, where we're having a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do that, and then how do you get there? It's all about you because you were created to fill a unique role in your work, a role that allows you to contribute what you do best, what you love to do most, to produce a result that matters deeply to you. And in that situation, you're in your sweet spot and you are not dreading Monday mornings. You are not living for the weekend. So welcome aboard. I'm Ken. I am your friend. We're going to have fun today. Some of you need to call in today. You can call in right now, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Some of you want to throw a chat uh, right there in the chat window next to the video window. Uh, You can do that as well. All right, let's jump into the reality of March. March is a different month as it relates to getting hired. Three things you need to know about a March job search. Uh, Forbes put this out. Courtney Whitehead did a wonderful job. And I want to share these three things and just teach briefly on this. Number one, it is going to be unpredictable. Number two, problem solvers are in demand. And number three, you're going to have to be ruthless about going through and sifting and filtering the opportunities. Now, let's break these things down. Uh, Obviously, folks, the unpredictability of the job market normally in the month of March is kind of up and down. The reason is because you think about it, a lot of people and companies are wanting to hire at the start of the year. So January and February are traditionally high hiring months. So the month of March can be unpredictable in that Some people aren't hiring. Some people still haven't hired. They haven't gotten the hires that they were looking for. And so it can be a really great opportunity. But now we throw the coronavirus on top of this deal and it's just changing. I mean, companies are literally saying, stay home, don't come in. Uh, And so will companies still be hiring? Yes. To the rate that they were maybe uh, last March or even January, February, we just simply don't know. So you need to have this mindset of, I don't know what's going to happen. That's going to create some uncertainty in me. And you don't want your emotions to be dictated by the uncertainty of multiple factors that we just discussed. Number two, uh, but problem solvers are always going to be in demand. And so if you think about that, um, there are certain companies that they still have a problem and whether coronavirus is an issue or the economy starts to slow or whatever, they still have a problem they need solved. And you have to see yourself as a problem solver. And and if you position yourself that way and understand that companies still have to keep going, they're not going to shut their doors just because times get a little tight. Companies are going to fight. Companies want to push through these uncertain times. So position yourself as a problem solver, and that's going to be a good thing. And then finally, um, there's a lot of opportunities still out there. I mean, February's job report was still very, very good. Um, Our economy... No matter what you're reading in the news, it's not just going to come to a full screeching halt out of nowhere. And so there are still more jobs available than there are people who are unemployed. So you've got to be really careful and very selective in what you're looking at. Don't just take a opportunity. Make sure it's the right opportunity. 844-747-2577 is the number to jump in. 844 747 2577. I've got my Ken Coleman show pencils sharpened before today's show. That means we're ready to go. We start with Paul in Moore Park, California. Paul, you're on the Ken Coleman show. Hello, Paul. Hi, Ken. How are you doing? I am living the dream. How can I help? So I have a quick question. My dream is to be basically a business consultant okay. for missionaries. Basically, missionaries that have businesses overseas, uh-huh. but they just kind of start them and they don't really know how to run them. So I would like to be able to help them set up that company to make it profitable for them. Okay. And I was kind of wondering the steps in getting there. Well, um, first things first, let's make sure you don't jump back into that wind tunnel or whatever you were doing. Are you? Where are you at right now? Uh, 
Yeah, I'll move. Okay. So that. All right, you that good? Better? That's better. We just need you to stay that right there. That'll be perfect. Okay. The question okay. that pops into my mind first is: Have you done enough market research? To, to know how big of an audience a potential customer that is, because you know who your customer is, and I give you, um, a, you know, a thumbs up for being clear about who you want to serve, which is missionaries overseas that are, I guess, starting side hustles or businesses to help support their mission. Is that correct? Right. How big of an audience is that? Like, like, have you done your homework on that? Yeah, actually, a lot of missionaries do have businesses overseas, just because you can. It's a lot easier to get a work visa. Gotcha. Rather than just kind of visiting the country. So okay. the work visa does allow okay. business how would missionaries you, to have some. How would you reach them? How do you get the word out to them to let them know, hey, um, I'm your guy. I can help you uh, start or I can help you stabilize, fix, whatever. Well, that's I'm not 100% sure of that. It's just because uh, a lot of missionaries, they're just trying to raise funds for themselves. So right. they do go to a lot of different churches and try to get support. I guess right. that's one way that I can connect with them is coming right. up to them when they're... Well, what you need to think about is you're going to have to think about all these missionaries are generally supported either by n denominations um, or non-denominational mission boards and things of that nature. So you've got to do your homework on how would you get the word out to these folks to say, hey, I can consult for you uh, from the States uh, or maybe come visit you from time to time. Here's what my rates are. Because I think the challenge you're also going to have early on, Paul, is that they don't have a lot of money. These businesses aren't doing that well. Um, and thus, that's why you want to help them. So you're going to have to get creative maybe on how you get paid um, because some of them may not have that upfront money and they may be a little bit wary. So I think it's doable. Um, I will tell you, Paul, and I'll answer any other questions you have, but I've given you homework on what you need to do. A, how do you get the word to them? Uh, B, what's your business model and how would you, uh, how could you be flexible in, in your pricing? Um, and then the, the third thing is, is that you need to understand this is a total side hustle. I don't think this is a smart decision to go all in on this. Um, right. Uh, minus any evidence that you haven't shared with me. So I think going after it and trying it, I think it's a great plan, but it's a side hustle. And then I think you build it over time uh, because if you if you help one, two or three missionaries really uh, flip their business, uh, the word will spread very quickly because that's a niche audience. And I think you could do very well. So I want to encourage you. I think it's a sound business idea. You just got some homework to do. And then um, you're also going to need to uh, make sure that you're patient Patience is the thing here. Don't try to do this all in right now because uh, that you could get hurt financially. 844-747-2577 is the number. Uh, let's go to Christy next. Is La Vida, Colorado is where Christy is. Christy, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, how are you? Christy, I'm living the dream. What's going on? Okay, so I live in very rural Colorado, southern mm -hmm. Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um I am 11 weeks pregnant. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And thank you. Um, my husband has a ranch job, and we've been really lucky that his job comes with housing. So mm -hmm. I've been able to have the freedom to start my own business. Mm -hmm. um, however, Which is what? It's more of a side hustle. What's your business? Um, wildlife control. Now, how, what does that mean? I, I am such a city slicker. You're going to have to bring me along. <laughs> <laughs> what does that so mean? So we... So we do like, um, if there are raccoons in your attic or something oh. like that, then we come and we relocate them. I see. You give rascal relief. Critter control. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I like that. I like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. All right, keep going. <laughs> and so, so originally, I'm just getting it started until it's successful enough for him to take over. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, it's more of a side hustle. So mm. I'm kind of backwards. I'm looking to, you know, get a day job because um, I can still do those that business on the weekends. Yeah, sure. However, there's one job that we have right now that's six weeks long. Um, so I would have to find a career that would allow me to take a six week break. You know what I mean? Um, during that summer job. Okay. Um, so, and so on that, go ahead. 
Go ahead. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you keep going. I've got a thought, but I want you to keep rolling. Okay. So um, I was also thinking, you know, when I have my baby, I want to be a stay at home mom for the first few years um, until they're in school. And then I was thinking of going back to school while they're starting school as well. Why would you go back to school? Um, um, I guess just to find what I'm passionate about. No, 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 um, no, 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 no. We don't go to school <laughs> to try to figure it out. We figure it out. And then we figure out if school is a part of the deal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm here. We don't go to school to figure it out. We go, what, what is it that you really want to do? Um, and, 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 and so we've got multiple layers here in this question. Okay. Yeah. So you need to find a day job that um, gives you the summer off to be able to do critter control, right? Or this right. one particular big critter control client. Yes. So, you know, w w the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head, and you can go do your homework on this. You really don't need me to brainstorm. This is just you getting out there and doing some good old fashioned research. But if you're working in the school system, whether that be a teacher, a teacher's assistant, or you're working in the office of a school system in some type of administrative support role, that would give you your summers off. So that's the first thing that pops in right. my mind because it's a day job. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. bringing in some money. It's stable. Probably get some benefits with that. And then you got your summers off and you go get rid of all them critters. And uh, boy, that's such a fun word to say, by the way. Critters. <laughs> uh, and, and so I think that's one idea. But I don't want to spend any time on that because I think you can handle that. The thing I want to talk about is, is what is it that you really want to do? What do you think about? What do you wonder about? What's something that when you were even a younger gal, you know, maybe middle school or even elementary school or high school or two weeks ago, you go, I just, if there was no risk and I was guaranteed success and I just wanted to try something, what would I try? Does anything pop in your mind when I ask you that? It would probably be counseling. Uh-oh, I love this. Tell <laughs> us why. What's your why? Um, well, I have had some pretty abnormal challenges that I've had to get through in my life. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that things happen for yeah. a reason. Yeah. And that reason is to help somebody else get through it. You bet. You nailed it, Christy. Out of your pain has come a deep passion. So who is it that you most want to give counseling to? Um, probably domestic violence victim victims. Okay. Now, how clear are you on that? On a scale of one to 10, one being I'm, I can't see two feet in front of me, 10 being it's the clearest thing I've ever thought of. If I had to skip schooling, it would be perfect, but I'm terrified. No, forget. No, 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 no. I see where <laughs> you're going. And by the way, that's why I'm on the show right now. I'm here to shut your doubt down. Your fear and doubt are lying to you. I didn't ask you that. I asked you if you knew you could not fail and forget schooling and all that. I just, well, you know what? Let's forget schooling, actually. Let's play with this. You took me there. Okay. Let's stay there. I snap my fingers right now, and you're a counselor tomorrow. How clear is that for you? Uh, crystal clear. There it is. So you're going to have to do school. There's just no way around this. You're going to have to have a degree to get into counseling. Um, but I mm -hmm. think because you love it and there's a deep abiding passion that comes from your own pain, I think you can get through it. I know you got kiddos or, you know, a kiddo on the way. I know there's all these things, but I know that a focused Christy is unstoppable because there's a deep why behind why you want to do counseling. And so I, I think you just come up with a plan. So this is really, you know, breaking down stage two of my seven stages. Stage ones get clear. You're very clear. Stage twos get qualified. So we know you're going to have to get a degree and then there's some type of counseling hours and you're going to have to put in some clinical time and some, you know, whatever. I just don't know it, but you can find out if you don't already know it. And so you look at that and you right. go, okay, if everything is just normal, it's going to take me this amount of time and it's going to cost me this much money. Well, you may not be in a normal situation. All right. So then you go, okay how many different ways can I get there uh, based on time and money? How much money I can put into it, which then adjusts my time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so here's the deal, Christy. You get super clear on that and it's not so scary because you go, okay, this is one path. 
this is another path, and this is another path. All of the paths lead you to this purpose, this big, this is what. This is, this is what I want to do, and this is why. Purpose always answers the question, why am I here? Why do I want to do this? Because I've overcome some things, and I know that I have the scars and the, and the memories and the techniques and the stories, and I've got the success stories. I, I experience victory. I'm no longer a victim, and I can give that away, and I'm supposed to give that away. Now, that is what you hold on to. In this season, it may take you multiple years. You don't take your eye off of your heart. Your heart is revealing everything, and it'll keep you in the game. Love, love, love your story, Christy. And I believe in you. I know you're going to get there. It may take a little bit of time, but you and the hubs get on the same page, make a financial plan, which will then dictate your calendar of when you're going to arrive there. And oh, by the way, Life may throw a couple curveballs at you, but that doesn't have to stop you. It might slow you down, but you've got that vision. You've got your why. Love that story. 844-747-2577 is the number. 844-747-2577. Hey, if you're enjoying the show and it's encouraging you, it is equipping you on your journey, would you give us a thumbs up right now? I know it's uh, I know it's an ask. But these are the kind of things that YouTube pays attention to, and they take our show, and they put it out in front of people who are from all around the world that are searching the type of stuff that we're talking about on this show. And so a thumbs up would help us. If you subscribe, that helps us. And I don't mind asking for that. Would you please do it right now? It just takes a half a second. And uh, if you know somebody that you think could benefit from this conversation, hit that share button. It's going to pull that link up and allow you to shoot it out. Email, social media, multiple ways. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, to the chat room we go. Uh, Old Alexander James is the uh, first one up. Uh, My brother thinks his calling only involves providing for his large family with a well-paying job. He hates his job, but it pays well. How can I help him see having job as both provision and purpose? Oh, that's good. I like that. I like, of course, I love alliteration. I'm a big fan. Anytime you can st- you know, have alliteration, provision, and purpose, I get a little excited there. Um, this, is, this is sensitive because A, he's your brother, okay? And so sometimes there's a weird dynamic when a family member seeks to give some advice and kind of, give insight into a what is a very personal situation. So he's feeling a tremendous amount of pressure. As a man, dudes tend to have more pressure on them as a provider. And they feel like, oh, I got to provide, provide, provide. So understand, put yourself in his shoes for a moment, okay? All right, second, his mindset is he has got to provide above all and if he has to think in for, for just a second that he might have to go backwards financially or add some more cost to his plate to get where he wants to go, he goes, I don't think it's worth it. So understand now he's got that deal. So pressure to provide. And then I don't think I can get there because I don't want to go backwards financially because I am the provider. Two major hurdles you got to clear. So what you do is you start with the conversation in my mind. This is time uh, alone, away from everybody, and have some dream conversations. Get his heart going again. And, and what did he wonder about as a young guy? Uh, what, what would he do tomorrow if? Uh, what would he do tomorrow if he knew he couldn't fail? Family's going to be taken care of. This is the big question I ask all the time on the show. And what it does is allows people to turn the fear and doubt off and go, "Oh, okay, momentarily I'll suspend disbelief." And I'll take away all the fears and doubts and risk, and I'll just answer the question. It'll work for him too. If it works for me, it'll work for you to ask and just say it. What would you do tomorrow? You just try it. You don't even have to commit to it. Get that conversation going. And when he begins to identify that, then help him walk through the process of what would it take to get there? What are the qualifications that he would need? Okay, how much is that going to cost? And based on his financial reality, how long is that going to take? And what you're trying to do is walk him through this to see, oh, there is a way to get where I want to go that doesn't require me to put my family's well-being at risk financially. But that's the fear. So there's three steps here, and I'll give you this and we'll move on. If he's got some fear, make him name it. I've talked about this on the show. Write the fear out. Make him tell you what the fear is. That's the first thing. We call it out. We get it 
on paper and we look at it and we go, oh, then we deconstruct it, put it on trial. Is it really true? This is a lie. How is it a lie? All right, break that down. And then now that we know what the lie is, so we take our focus off of the lie, which is the fear, and we put it on the truth, the future, that desired future. That's a three-step process to break down fear. And if you walk him through that, he'll get there. He really will. Uh, let's go to uh, Chelsea says, do you have any advice on how to do volunteer work or interning in a similar role until I can become a licensed counselor? Oh, yeah. So this is just showing up and going, here's the deal. This is the path that I'm on. I'm, I'm getting the education and the training right now. And, but I want to be in proximity. Show them the book. I read this book, The Proximity Principle. It says I got to be around people that are doing what I want to do. It says I got to be in places where it's happening. This is one of those places. I just want to add value. And the value is can I volunteer, even if it's answering phones during lunch three days a week for your reception so she can go or whatever it is? Find a way to serve and just go, I have no agenda other than learning, observing, and connecting. How can I serve? And you keep knocking on doors, somebody's going to say yes. Uh, let's go to one more. Kyle P. I'm an office manager for a construction company, but I feel like I'm just settling because of the money instead of doing something that makes me really happy. What should I do? Oh, Kyle P., you need to call in the show, man. Kyle P., go through my exercise and then call the show. Here's the exercise. Get out. Pad of paper like this. And uh, let me do this, Nathan. I'm going to I'm gonna tell you to zoom in in a moment here. I'm just going to do this. I've never drawn it out. This is so unbelievably simple. Here we go, Kyle P. This is what you're going to do, okay? Talent. You're going to write talent. And then you're going to write passion. And then you're going to write mission. And I scribble. So I'm trying to do this really neat, okay? And you're going to draw lines like this. And so talent is what I do best. Thank you all for being patient as I write this out. And uh, what I love to do, y'all are going to see my chicken scratch. It's a, just a warning here. You would think I'm a doctor when you see my handwriting, all right? And then finally, results that matter to me, okay? All right, let's see. I can tilt this here to get to this, but just this. can we zoom in here? There we go, right here. We got it. Oh, what do I have to do? I'll see the lighting. Oh, there we go. Oh, wait, there it is. Wait, oh, oh, this is so weird. Oh, there it is. There we go. What a, what a, that was such a weird exercise for me. But there it is. And here's the deal. You just write it out, okay? Kyle P, just write it out. Top two or three things in each column, okay? What do people always compliment me on? What comes easy for me? Write it down on the talent. This is what I do best. Passion, what I love to do. What's a task, a role, a function that you look forward to? Um, it creates ex excitement when you think about it. And when you're in the middle of it, time seems to stand still. It disappears on you. You look up, you go, whoa, that was three hours. I thought it was 30 minutes. That's what you love to do. And then results that matter. What moves your heart? When you see these results, or is there a problem that you really want to solve or a solution or a person that you really want to help, a people group? Okay, those are the results. You put all that together and you go, where does that exist in the marketplace? How can I use what I do best to do what I love to create a result that matters most? It's not difficult. And then call me. Call me. Get some feedback before you call me. Make sure that you're not delusional on these answers. And then call me, 844-747-2577. That is the number. All right. Um, I want to switch gears. I want to get really, really practical for a moment um, because... The job interview, we know from research, is the most stressful performance for most people in their life. You know, they don't host a radio show live. They don't speak in, in, on a stage. They don't act for a living. They're not on TV. And so the, the most stressful fear and doubt-inducing performance for most people in their life is the job interview. And yet this is the moment where you want to perform well. So um, I want to give you 12 things. We're going to roll through these really quick. You can write these uh, or you can go get the article at KenColeman.com. 12 interview tips to impress any hiring manager. Okay, here we go. We're going to roll through these quick because, again, the article's at KenColeman.com. Here we go. If you're on time, you're late. Listen, just plan. Go through the route. Get up extra early. 
leave an hour earlier than you need to. Sit in the parking lot for 25 minutes if you're there early. Who cares? Just get there way early. You don't have to walk in the building early, but get there. You don't want anything to go wrong. That could be a first impression issue that you may never recover from. Number two, stalk your interviewer. Uh, I said this in the article and it freaks people out. Like Joe's like, what? Okay, don't stalk them, please. I don't want any restraining orders. I'm speaking metaphorically here. The idea is if you can research the person you're going to be doing the interview with. Okay, social media, uh, LinkedIn. Why? You're looking for little nuggets that you can drop in conversation for connection points. Number three, uh, this is the grandma rule. Ask your grandma if she's willing and if she knows how to look at your social media accounts. If she can't and won't, think of your grandma. When you go look at your social media accounts, scrub everything. Go look. Hey, would my grandmother be embarrassed about this? Would she have questions about this that are eh, borderline sketchy? Get rid of it. Number four, watch what you eat. Now, there's two things you're thinking about here. Number one, make sure you're... Your, your energy's high and your energy's good. So eat good foods, clean foods that give you natural energy uh, so that you perform well. And then second, make sure you got that food in the old stomach. You don't want to be low blood sugar. And the worst is when you're in an interview and all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It's one of those deals. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's embarrassing for everybody. Number five, bring a copy of your resume or portfolio of your work. Um, you know, some people forget about this. Uh, and, and understand that a lot of hiring managers don't spend a lot of time preparing. So they may go, hey, do you have your uh, resume with you today? Do you have your portfolio? And you don't want to be like, oh, uh, I didn't bring it. Be ready. Be prepared. It's one other little thing that if you go, oh, yeah, it's right here. Hand it right across the desk. And they go, oh, very impressive. Um, number six, don't overshare. Don't lie. Not even a little white lie. Oh my gosh, you just don't want that to blow everything if you do otherwise really well in the interview and then you've you've overshared, you share too much, you get a little loose-lipped or, you know, you just take a little white lie and it comes back to hurt you. Number 7, be yourself. Um just take a lot of deep breaths before you walk in. It'll calm you. Just be you. Don't try to be somebody that you think they want you to be, just be you. Authenticity is a is a gorgeous quality. Number eight, think about your nonverbal cues. Okay, this is my favorite tip here. Okay, number one, make eye contact. Keep eye contact throughout the entire time. You wouldn't believe how many people shift their eyes and it creates all kinds of weirdness. Look people in the eye. Number two, smile. Here it is right here. It's enjoyable. It's a little weird when I do that and pause. It just occurred to me. But make eye contact and smile. Here's what it would look like if you don't smile. Okay, you're gone. You're already done. I'm not hiring you. If you look at me that way, I'm calling security. Okay? It just is what it is. Uh, lean in. Not just make eye contact and smile, but move in a positive way. You know, good energy. Don't just be so stiff and, you know, engage uh, with your entire body. And then my favorite tip here on this particular section is take notes. Um, even if you're not writing anything down, do this number right here. Okay? So picture, picture what you look like. You're sitting... And uh, you know, that's why I love YouTube. This is what I love about YouTube, visual aids. So you're sitting in an interview. I'm you, okay? They're asking you questions. They're talking for a little bit. You're asking some questions. I share this on how to win the interview guide uh, in, excuse me, I share this in how to win, how to win the interview guide on KenColeman.com. But it's your turn to talk and you ask a question. They start talking. You start doing this number. You could be writing, I love Cracker Jacks. I don't care what you write on the paper. But it, it just shows engagement. I don't think it's dishonest. You're just writing stuff down. Write stuff down. Say, that was very good. Write a few things down. Write anything they say down. Just write it down. It's a wonderful little thing. Number nine, dress to impress. Here's the deal. Please dress to the level. Don't go overboard. Don't show up in a tux if they're business casual. Please don't show up in a t-shirt and flip-flops if they're business casual. Dress to impress be on the high end of their normal dress code. Which means, by the way, I'm going to go off on this. If it's a business casual environment, guys, tuck your shirt in. Unless you go buy and untuck it. All right, I'll give you the, the untuck it brand. If, you, if it looks decent and it's designed to be untucked, I'm fine with it. Okay? But iron your shirt and your pants. There's nothing worse than a person who tries to hit the dress code 
And they're going, oh, well, I don't normally wear a shirt tucked in and I don't normally wear khakis, but I'm going to pull these khakis out that have been sitting in my closet for two years and they got wrinkles so deep in them that you could pour milk and eat cereal. Uh, I earn your clothes for crying out loud. I earn your shirt. Don't look like you just rolled out of bed or like you've never worn this outfit in your entire life. Guys, make sure the shirt fits. This is another pet peeve of mine. Guys that buy a shirt that's one size too big because you just want to feel comfortable. Oh, well, guess what? You're going to look like you put a trash bag on yourself. Okay, You're going to look like you borrowed your dad's shirt for the love of everything that's holy. Please buy a shirt that fits. Even if you got a dad bod and you got a little pooch, please wear a shirt that fits. Don't go buy an extra large shirt if you're 5'9 and you got a little belly. Okay, just you're not hiding the belly anyway. So put on a shirt that works. I see this all the time. It's my number one pet peeve. Guy rolls in and the crease of his shirt is down here mid arm because he's trying to hide his belly. Well, here's the deal. You're not hiding your belly. Now you look ridiculous. Okay, just just we know this from research. I shared this on the show recently that wearing fitted clothing, even if you're not in great shape, makes you look more successful. All right. I could do a whole show, by the way, on helping dudes look the right way. Very passionate about this issue. Um, and then uh, number 10, don't ask them to show you the money. Please don't talk money in the first interview. Let them bring up money. Don't all ever be the one that brings up money. Let them bring up the money. Then you can have the conversation. Number 11, um, this is for millennials and uh, Gen Z. Leave your parents at home. You wouldn't believe how many people are bringing their parents to a job interview. Oh my gosh, nothing says yikes more than bringing mom and dad to your interview. And then number 12, leave the pickup lines at the bar. Here's what I'm talking about. Please don't be Mr. and Mrs. or Mr. and Miss cliche. You know what I mean? Like, don't be like buzzword after buzzword after buzzword and phrase after phrase. Like you have been spending all night looking for the opportunity to drop one of your lines. That kind of stuff is just so goofy and so awful. So please, please don't do that. Hey, uh, speaking of which, ultimately you want to use the proximity principle so that by the time you get to the interview, they already know who you are and they love everything about you. Uh, the proximity principle was written for you. We've got a great book bundle right now at KenColeman.com. All three formats, the hard copy with my autograph on that, the ebook if you like to read it on a device, and then the audiobook read to you by yours truly, all for $25. That's an unbelievable deal. Number one, Wall Street Journal bestselling book. So think about this now. Here we are in March, Joe. It's unbelievable. Uh, this is the greatest graduation gift I think you could possibly buy. Yes, I'm biased. I wrote the book. What else do you want me to say? It will help college graduates. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So go get it and give it to somebody. All right, uh, back to the phones we go. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Jason is up next in York, Pennsylvania. Jason, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, how you doing, sir? Jason, I'm living the dream. What's happening, man? Not too much. Um, I just wanted to kind of chat. I um, emailed Dave Ramsey, just looking for some guidance. Um, uh, I've been out of a job now for going on in those six months. Uh, I have a long job history just never felt in the right spot um always felt like i was worth more than what i was doing mm -hmm. and uh just never something fit so uh now we're in the coach time right now i have two little kids one on my way and uh just things are getting tight and um my heart's always been set on business uh there's a few things that kind of always come to my mind with like either like real estate investing uh, i've always had a passion to help people so just looking for some guidance on what I need to do so I can get my family back on track and obviously be that provider that I need to be being the man. Yeah. Well, we'll do some clarity in just a moment, but first thing you need to do is get a job. There's no, there's no excuse right now, Jason, and I'm on your side, but I'm talking to you man to man right now. Okay. I got three uh -huh. kids. You got two with one on the way. You've been out of work for six months in the hottest job economy in the history of the United States. There's no excuse for that. Unless you're not telling me something that you've got some physical challenge or something like that or sickness that is literally keeping you from working for someone. And I'm not getting on you, but I've got to be really honest with you. We have got to get you a J-O-B. It does not need to be a dream job. You just need to be able to be able to do it because you have got to get some stability. You are in no yep. position to start a business right now because you're stressed out of your mind and you need stability. So in York, Pennsylvania, um, 
again, across the United States, forget the coronavirus, we still have more jobs available than people who uh, are unemployed. And so now's the time, bro. And you need yeah, to go I've get a, it. I, it doesn't, you know what? We, we're past the stage of finding something. We're not yep. trying to find something right now. We're trying to get something. There's a difference. You don't yep. have the option to be choosy. You have to get a job. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, sir. So, Jason, I'm telling you, and I'm on your side. All right? We're going to dream, but I want you to hear me say, no dream happens if you're desperate. Okay? We need to get sure. stability. So get a job. And I mean get a job this next week, the week after that. Get a job. You could go deliver pizzas. You could go dig ditches. You, sir, need to bring some money in. And I mean immediately. Now, I'm going to say this to our audience because people will hear this. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you're watching this. If you're anybody, anyone, you know anybody in York, Pennsylvania, you know anybody that works at a solid company um, uh, or owns a company, runs a landscaping business, Jason can do it. Uh, and, and and so what we got to figure out here is, is if you can help send an email to the show, ask at KenColeman.com. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I don't want to rely on this, Jason. Don't wait for mm -hmm. something to come to you, but I'm going to try to help you right now. Okay? Appreciate that. But I don't want you to wait on any email from me. But if you're watching right now, ask at KenColeman.com is the email. If you know anybody in York, Pennsylvania, and you're willing to make a connection to Jason, then email the show and say, I want to help Jason. All right? That's the subject line. And Joe and Madison, we will uh, connect you to Jason uh, if you're willing to help. Now, Jason, let's dream for a moment. Uh -huh. What have you always wanted to do? When you say, should I start a business? Or what's something that you would start tomorrow if you knew you couldn't fail and money wasn't an issue? You just... I'm going to do it. It's going to be success successful. What would you do? Uh, real estate investing. Yeah, but you got a problem, man. You don't have any money. You don't have any money. You can't <laughs> invest anything. No. Nope. So, but if it wasn't if it wasn't that, um, I'd say I wanted to do something with the youth just because I had a trouble past and that was always put down in my life. So yeah. I want to get back to those kind of kids that. Well, I you know can do both. By the way, you can yep. do both. Down the line, you can do real estate investing. You got to get your your mm -hmm. financial ship in order, and you're listening to Dave Ramsey, so you know how to do that. You've got a plan, so you got to do it. But you need to mm -hmm. change your focus to if I want to invest in real estate and make a lot of money, or at least enough money, and also give back to troubled youth. Well, you know you can do both. One of those uh -huh. could be your full time deal eventually. And yep. then you could volunteer or create some type of nonprofit with all that money you're making in real estate. Um, but if I were you, I'd get stable in the next week or two with a job, maybe two part-time jobs. I don't care. You just need money coming in, bro. And then mm -hmm. I want to see you going, all right, who do I know in the real estate business in York, Pennsylvania? I need to try to work for them because they're in the business I want to be in, whether they're investors or not, could be a successful realtor. What are, you, what are your top skills? What could you do in the marketplace today? If I just said, this is my guy, Jason. This is what he does best. And I'm out there looking for you for a job. What would be the top two or three things you bring to the marketplace that you could get paid for today? I'm, I'm good at connecting with people. So like relationship building, um, marketing, um, I have some background in that and just being able to do that. So that, that's probably like my top two skills. Okay. All right. You need to be looking for gigs that allow you to do that. Okay. Okay. And yep. then I would look for a way to do that in the real estate industry. If you can okay. eventually transition into that, where you're using your marketing skills, your people skills, the ability to connect with others. And if you can use that in the real estate industry, man, you're making great connections. That's the proximity principle, getting around people that are doing what you want to do, yep. getting mm -hmm. in places where it's happening. Do you have my book, The Proximity Principle, Jason? I do not. All right. You do today. I'm giving it to you. Hang on the line. Madison's going to give it to you. And I, I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm on you. I'm not on you. But folks, I'm going to tell you something right now. There is no excuse to be unemployed for six months in this job economy right now. Outside of medical issues that would preclude you from being able to work. That would include, you know, some deep depression, mental illness. I'd put that on the list because you got to get healthy. But outside of that, there's no excuse to be unemployed. None. At all. Period. Get stable. 
Then we get after the dream. My time is almost up, but I'm having a blast. I love being with you folks. But before I let you go, I want you to know that you do matter. You do have what it takes. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Press on.